Before I preheat my oven even, we're going to arrange the oven racks because you know my turkey's gonna go in and I need plenty of room so that the turkey will fit in the oven, but then also I'm gonna need some other areas so that I can you know roast and, and cook some stuff. So I'm just gonna kind of kneel down here, open and organize. We're just gonna kind of grab our lowest rack and we're gonna put that on the lowest rack slide. And my idea here is that I've got this turkey roasting tray, this turkey roasting tray. We're gonna imagine our turkey sitting in it. Maybe I can even take our turkey cold in the bag before I even worry about roasting it and just stick it in here and make sure that it's gonna fit. So it's gonna sit, it's gonna be about that high up. And it looks like we're gonna have to adjust the highest rack onto the highest point. So now our turkey will fit there and we've got one tray ready above. Can I fit our turkey in this direction, back to front and close the door? Awesome, it doesn't look like it's quite gonna close and seal that way. So I've got a lay of the land for our oven, which is gonna help me strategize in the game plan here. So I would say, so now that our oven is adjusted, we can preheat our oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. So ideally, we would season our turkey the night before. A big piece of meat like this, seasoning it the night before will allow the salt to penetrate into the flesh, which will do a couple of different things. One, it'll dry brine the turkey and allow it to stay moist when it's cooking. Um, and also, it will season it all the way through. We don't have the luxury right this moment of doing that, so it's fine for us to cook it as, as soon as we season it. However, um, if you have the opportunity to season it the night before, that's great. And if you do, you season it, you throw it in the fridge overnight, but ideally as well, it would come up to room temperature before you throw it in the oven. It'll just save you time in the roasting process um, and it'll make it cook more evenly. So this turkey has been sitting out for a few hours this morning, so it's about room temperature and it'll cook a little faster, a little more evenly. So we can bring this bad boy over to the sink and then, we're gonna make a seasoning rub. So really, really simple and straightforward, but we're just gonna grab um, some salt that we're gonna use for our turkey. Um, we're gonna zest a couple of lemons in there. So using a grater, I have this fancy lemon zester, but any grater will work. We're just gonna kind of grate around. We want as much of the kind of lemon yellow, but we don't necessarily want any of the white pith. Um, ultimately, this is going to roast for a long time and I don't think it's going to make a huge difference for this turkey, but it's good to be just kind of in the, I don't know, in the habit of zesting the rind off without the pith because the pith can be a bit bitter. Um, so I can smell it already. It's got this incredible like lemon zest flavor wafting up. So we can get that going. And throughout this process, like we're not going to use this grater again, I'm going to now wash the grater and put it away because there's no point in having excess stuff. We've got a lot of stuff here. So, got our lemon zest in with our salt. Some coriander seed is gonna go right in with our salt. And that salt, coriander seed, and lemon zest is gonna make the seasoning mix that we're gonna season our turkey with. We're then gonna actually cut these lemons in half because we're gonna stuff the inside of the turkey with some lemon, some fresh thyme, and that's all gonna help to roast and keep it really beautiful, and a bay leaf. So lemon, fresh thyme, bay leaf, we've got our seasoning mix, and we can bring this all over to the sink with us for our turkey. Take a second to wipe down our cutting board. Again, I'm gonna rinse our zester and put that away. And I promise you that taking the time to clean, organize, and put your stuff away throughout this process is going to be the key to success. So, our turkey here comes in this beautiful package, which is helping us to not drip all over the place. Once we've, I've already sanitized our sink, so it's clean and sanitized. Just gonna pierce this with my finger here. 
tear open the turkey and allow it to drain because any of the kind of juices that have purged out of it. So we don't want, we don't, we don't need those. And then we're going to reach into the, I'm going to actually throw this bad boy away here. And then we're going to reach into the cavity of our turkey, which is right here. And we're going to pull out the neck. And then usually in the front cavity of our turkey over here are any of the giblets, like we've got heart and liver, but it turns out in this turkey, there are really none. So it's just the neck, which is fine. If I do have the heart and the liver and the, and the gizzard, I would use those for the stuffing, but in this case, they don't exist. So the next step I want to do is I just want to bend the wings from the turkey down below the turkey. So I'm just going to take these guys. You can see how these wings are sitting like this, and I'm just going to bend them down like this underneath so that that way the turkey is sitting flat on them. And now we can just season this entire thing all over the outside with our salt and lemon rub. So really rubbing it all over. We're going to season it with our lemon. A big handful inside, which we can kind of sprinkle and dump, and top to bottom, all around the outside, we've got this lemon and fennel seed and salt and lemon zest. Excuse me, lemon, coriander seed, salt and lemon zest all over our turkey. And then we can take this guy and place him right on our baking tray, centered, and this is going to be our turkey. I'm going to take our gizzard, or excuse me, our neck, put it in our bowl here, because we're going to use that and reserve it. And now we can just rinse out our sink and rinse off our hands. So we have this turkey now that's kind of covered in the lemon zest, the coriander, and the salt. And remember that we're seasoning this entire thing, so we want the entire thing to be really nicely covered in salt. It's got like a, it seems like a lot of salt, but you're not just seasoning the outside, you're seasoning the entire thickness of bird. 12 pounds here. And then, our lemons can go right in the cavity. Our bay leaf can go right in the cavity. Our bunch of thyme can go right in the cavity, just like that. And I'm just going to let the thyme kind of sit out of the end right there. And you'll see that after it's done roasting, when we present this bird, you're going to be able to see that it's going to be really beautiful. Most people, they cook their turkey the entire way and they leave their turkey at the table and then they carve the turkey from whole at the table. I don't prefer to do it that way. The reason I don't prefer to do it that way is that the breasts cook faster than the legs. So if you wait until the legs are completely cooked, the breasts are going to be really overcooked. So what we are going to do is cook it until the breasts are just completely cooked and the legs are still undercooked. And then we're going to let it rest and present it. So when our guests come in, our turkey is going to be out at the table completely done. Then when it's time to sit down for dinner, we're going to take that turkey off the table, bring it back into the kitchen because it's had plenty of time to rest. It's going to be easy to carve because it won't be overly hot. The juices will have absorbed back in so it won't run. It'll stay really moist. And what we'll be able to do is carve the meat off the bone, actually roast it and crisp up the skin, cook it the rest of the way, and then slice it so we can present it all fanned out. It's going to be so beautiful. So our turkey is now seasoned. Our oven rack is adjusted. We're going to get our turkey in the oven to start the roasting process. I'm going to set a timer on my watch that just lets me know how long this turkey's been in the oven. So this guy's going right in our oven in the center of that bottom rack that we prepared. Ah. Our turkey has been roasting for about 45 minutes. So it's time to turn the oven down to that 350 degrees where we're going to continue roasting our turkey because the idea is that we want to get some color on it to start and then we want to slow it down so that it kind of roasts a little bit more slowly. The turkey's been going for an hour and 20 minutes. So this is the first time I'm actually going to check the turkey. So we can pull our turkey 
out of the oven completely, and we're gonna, we're gonna poke it with our thermometer and see how far along it is. We wanna check the turkey basically after the first hour and a half or so and see how close it is and decide then, like let's say that the turkey comes out and it's 90 degrees on the inside. It needs a full another hour, I'm not worried about it. If it comes out and it's like 110, it might need to check it more often. Um, as the turkey gets hotter, it tends to cook a little bit faster. So it'll take like an hour for it to go from 70 to 90, but it'll only take a half hour from it to go to from 90 to 110. And it'll, then it'll only take like 15 minutes from it, for it to go from like 110 to 130. So it kind of gets exponentially faster as it gets warmer. So really, really important when we're using something big and heavy and hot to be super careful. I've got these nice dry towels or oven mitts that I'm gonna fold a few times. There's the deal. When you take something moist, like a moist towel I've been wiping up, just barely, barely moist to the touch, but you can feel it. Because I've been wiping up my, my, my cutting board and drying a couple of dishes. If I were to grab my really hot out of the oven baking tray, what'll happen is the moisture in the towel will come to a boil immediately as I touch it, sizzling. And then the steam, as you can imagine, will expand and penetrate through and it will burn my hand. And a steam burn is even more, more painful than just even bo pouring boiling water on your hand. So it can be, and that's when we, you know, start to burn ourselves, we drop our towel, it's scary, we drop the turkey. So using really dry, either oven mitts or, or our towels, we're just gonna carefully open our oven and we can take our turkey completely out. The reason, Oh my gosh. The reason that I like to take the turkey completely out of the oven is it's going to take me a couple of seconds to check the temperature of the turkey and mess with it. And the whole time that I have the oven open, I'm losing the heat from the oven. So I take the turkey out, I close the oven, I let the oven stay hot, and then we can check the turkey out here. So first and foremost, I'll give us a little poke and actually it's starting to feel firm to the touch, it doesn't feel raw anymore. Because this turkey was quite warm, it was quite room temperature, it was out for a few hours, maybe it'll cook a little faster. We can grab our instant read thermometer and there are a couple ways we can check. But basically we just wanna, we wanna poke in kind of deep in the flesh, right where the, where the breast meets the wing, where the breast meets the leg. We're gonna just poke straight in and we're gonna check the temperature of our turkey here. So, poking straight in, maybe we can poke until we hit bone, and then we can inch it back maybe just a quarter inch or so, so that we're in the flesh and not really touching the bone. We can just look at what, what we've got going on here. You can see that, looks like we're about 114 degrees. There are a lot of numbers here, but this is the guy, 114 degrees. We wanna be at around 130 degrees. So. The other way that you can check if you don't have a, 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 a thermometer, but you do have a metal skewer or a meat fork, is you just take this out and you're just gonna touch it against your lip here. And I can feel that it's warm, but it's not hot. I want it to be hot, but not burning hot. So 114 is warm. This would be a perfect medium rare steak. If we were trying to cook steak medium rare, right now we got medium rare but we ain't trying to cook our turkey medium rare people. So we're gonna go back in the oven. I love what's going on as far as the look of the turkey with the lemon zest and the salt and the crispiness and the color. So, you know, if at this point your turkey is really, really dark and starting to get maybe a few little burnt pieces, you can take a piece of tin foil and just make a kind of light covering, which will help to reflect some of the direct heat and stop it from getting more color. If it's got no color at all, don't worry about that because you can always turn up the heat at the end and get color on it. But what we don't want to do, you know, is, is ignore what's going on. And if it is starting to get burnt, you can, you can cover it. So this is going to go right back in the oven. And I'd say we've got probably about a half an hour between 115 degrees and the 120, 130 degrees where we want to pull it out. So right back on the in the oven ah, again using our towels carefully the turkey has been in for just shy of two hours so 
we can take a look here and again being really careful with our dry towels or our um, or our kitchen mitts get ourselves prepared with a place for our turkey to sit and we can just kind of pull it out uh, carefully we can just kind of grab our instant read thermometer and just poke our kind of poke it in here until we hit bone and then draw it back maybe a quarter inch and we'll see we're up at about 126 degrees this is really great so anybody will tell you like listen you have to cook the turkey way hotter wait a second it's up it's at 130 degrees we wanted it to be 130 we wanted it to be 130 degrees we're at 129 degrees this is really perfect for me anybody will tell you that that is not well done we do not want it to be well done we want the breast of the turkey to be medium well we want the legs to be medium and then what we're going to do is we're just going to present this on our table we're going to let it rest when we're ready to serve it we're going to carve it and finish it cooking in the oven but because it's going to rest for like a full hour it's going to be super duper moist all that moisture that's kind of close to the bone when we would carve it it would it is going to have absorbed back into the flesh the flesh is going to be evenly cooked really moist and delicious the skin is dry and super crispy i mean you can literally like break it and see that the salt has made this like super crispy crust on top absolutely gorgeous so again if we were to do our kind of like lip test we just grab it out touch it to our lip and it's just kind of like it's not so hot that i'm like searing my lip going like wow i burned myself but it's hot enough that I, I couldn't leave it there. So that's really medium well, and that's exactly where I want our turkey to go. We're just gonna turn our oven back up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. We're just gonna slide her close to us. We're gonna insert these tongs or this meat fork right into the cavity at the front, and we're gonna just lift our turkey off of this tray and put it right onto our cutting board. Now. Because it's been resting for the better part of an hour, all the juices should have been absorbed back in. And for the most part, I don't think it's gonna drain all over the place. That said, we wanna have some towels at the ready. Whenever we're slicing meat, having just a nice towel that can absorb any of the juices that come out before they run all over the place will save us from really freaking out. They also have cutting boards that have some notches around them. Those are really great. In this case, I think we're gonna be okay. Here's the deal. Firstly, we're going to pull out the beautiful roasted lemons because those are going to be garnish, so we can keep those to the side. The thyme that's been roasted and the bay leaves from the inside, that's all going to be beautiful garnish for our plate, so we can keep those to the side. And then what we want to do is we want to remove the legs from our turkey. So using a large knife if you feel comfortable, a smaller knife if you feel like it's a little bit too much, we're going to hold the turkey facing ourselves so that the two legs are to here and I'm just going to make an incision next to the leg right between the breast and the leg so you can see that kind of wiggle 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 moves right here that's where the leg that's where our incision is going to go I want most of the skin to stay on our breast so we're going to go on both sides just around between the leg and the breast now we're just going to holding the knife on the breast we're going to pull and we're going to try and pull down this leg and you can see that the leg just kind of slides off of the bird just like that you can see that the leg just slides right off of the bird but it's a little bit it's got some color in there it's a little pinker than I want it to be right the legs are going to need to go back in the oven so we can take this and by holding by the front of the leg we're actually going to flip the whole turkey right upside down and then we're going to put our knife flat right where the turkey leg has slid there's where the skin split right here and we're going to pull the turkey leg up and then we're going to slice straight down and our turkey leg is going to come off and that's why we had this towel here because some of these juices are going to pull off so again you can soak those up this right here is one of the best pieces of turkey of all i am not afraid of turkey with a little color so that is delicious putting our knife right where the bone where the where the leg cut comes here I'm just gonna pull again up I'm sorry the back of the knife so I don't cut in breaking through the bone and then that we can just slice straight 
off, and those are our two legs, right? So now, mm, good to be the chef. We can flip this guy back over, and we're going to take our breasts off of the carcass. So to do that, we're going to take our turkey, and again, straight down the center, we're going to make a slice. And that's where the two breast bones meet. And what we're going to do is we're going to make an incision straight down. And you can feel, like, look, there's a little bone there. We're going to just go to the left of there so that my knife is hugging the bone. And we're just going to slice straight down until we hit the wishbone over here, right in here. And then using our knife, we're just going to kind of pry the breast aside. And you can see that there's some just the flesh. We're going to cut and pry and cut and pry. And by doing this, what we can actually do is get this whole turkey breast right off of the carcass as a whole piece. And that is exactly the color we want. It's like slightly, slightly, slightly off white, but it's not that dry and gray. And then if you just tilt it, you can see that there is where the wing is attached to the meat. And using the kind of end of our knife, we can just cut straight down. And there's our breast, right off of there. And again, chef privilege, best, moistest, most delicious part, right in my throat. Mmm! The breast is now off this left side. Now we're going to start on this side over here. We're going to again. So here's this kind of breast bone in the middle. We're just going to carve to the left and if you kind of poke around with the tip of your knife and it's a little bit hard, oh, there it is, soft through. Slice straight down through to the right side of our breast until my knife stops. And then we're just going to pry the meat away and look in there and see what I need to slice. Slice and pry, slice and pry, and this whole breast is going to slice right off. And again, we get to the point where I hit a bone. Pull it open and I can see, where is it? Oh, right there, look. There is where the wing bone is connecting. You can see it right in there. And that's where I can just slice straight through and we can take our second breast right off. So now I'm just gonna hold this off to the side. So first and foremost, we got a couple of breasts that are completely perfectly cooked and I don't want to really mess with them. I want to heat them up a little bit, crisp the skin, but I don't want to go further than that. The legs, however, I do want to cook a little bit more. This is a step that you can either skip or not, but for me, this makes a big difference. There's a bone, which is the thigh bone, that runs from here to here, and I would like to remove that. So in order to remove that, I'm just going to slice straight down where I know that thigh bone is, right here, and I'm just going to trace around it just like this with our knife. And this might be easier for you with a smaller knife, but basically I want to expose that bone and then using the back of our knife to stabilize the leg, we can just kind of scrape the meat around it off and then cut the thigh bone out of our bird. So again, I see I've got this whole thigh bone in my hand holding it. I can just kind of pull it back until I hear it break and then slice through until I see that knuckle and that's all the connective tissue. So I'm just pulling that guy out. This piece then I'm going to take and I'm going to stick him first on our tray. This guy here, again we've got our towel to get some of that juice. The thigh bone is going to run straight from here to here. This is where it attaches to the wing bone or the leg bone. So we're going to cut straight up across it. And again, if you don't feel comfortable with this step, we can, you know, slice around it and serve it. But for me, this is just an extra step that makes our turkey present really beautiful. So we're just going to go in here again, just kind of trace around there and I'm going to pull the bone out. And you can see that the bone is attached here. So if I just hold the meat and the, if I hold the meat down, I can actually just kind of twist and break back until I see where it's connected and then I can pull the bone right out. These guys here are going right back in the oven and they're only going to take about three minutes. So washing our hands, 
Remember, we kept our oven nice and hot at 450 degrees. We can drop these guys right back in. And while the legs are continuing to finally finish cooking, we can take our breasts and we can serve them for presentation. So we've got our tray here ready to present our turkey. And we have our breasts. First and foremost, we can take our wing, which is connected right here, right off. So straight down, again, pull the wing off. This wing has got, it's a little bit big for one person to eat, so maybe we'll cut it straight down. You can see that it's connected right there. You can cut it straight down, peel it back, and cut through. So those are gonna be two wing pieces. Do that on both of our breasts. So. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I see it's connected right there. I can come straight down, cut straight through, straight down, peel it back, straight down, and now I've got a couple of wing pieces. These are gonna present really beautifully. Now for our beautiful breast. This is the highlight, and we wanna be very careful. We're gonna just take it and angling our knife slightly, we're just going to slice. And you can see that I get a lot more control of my turkey because I'm using my hands, and if you want to use rubber gloves, you absolutely can, but I'm doing this in the kitchen. If my guests saw me manhandling their bird, they might be a little less excited about the outcome, but if I do it table side, I gotta like carve it with a carving knife and a fork, and it's really difficult to kind of get this amazing outcome. But here's what I got. I've got these breasts, and then just kind of like do a little salt bay action. Give it a little kind of tap with your knife, and you can see that it fans out absolutely beautifully. And that guy, slide the knife straight down. You can pick him up and drop him maybe here, right? Again with this, slicing at an angle. Anybody can do this. It's just a matter of taking the time to methodically, carefully slice the turkey. And then again, back of the knife, a little bit of action, just pounding it, and you're gonna see it fans out absolutely beautifully. Slide our knife underneath and holding it. Gonna fan out the other breast. Now, we can say, what do we have here? We've got some wing. Maybe we can cut a couple of these extra pieces of meat off of here so no one just gets like a giant wing meat. Pile those right in the middle. Maybe we've got one wing presented here off to one side. I don't know, we can kind of look for a beautiful presentation. Another wing, take some of this extra meat off of here, slice it up in the middle, this wing off of this side, and then again, we've got these kind of crispy, salty wing bits. Can sit right in with those wings, and that's gonna be there. Maybe we say we wanna take a couple of lemons, put them on top, got this bay leaf right here. Take a moment, wash our hands, and just give ourselves a break. And what we're gonna do is take the legs back out of the oven. They've just heated and cooked a little bit more. And these guys, Picking them up just by the kind of bone, carefully, they're quite hot. We're gonna slice these as well, just straight down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now these guys as well, we're gonna pick them up and it's gonna go maybe one of them right here, like that. And then this guy here, Again, maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then maybe this guy here, right over here. So we've got all of our dark meat, another leg presented, some of our fresh thyme that we pulled right out of there, straight over there. Chef privilege. And my belly. <clears throat> Be sure to like and subscribe. Check us on Instagram 
and download the Project Foodie app on the iOS App Store. I hope you've enjoyed this Project Foodie cook along and I hope you'll join us for more. If you wanna make a perfect turkey, you're gonna need the following ingredients. First and foremost, you need to select a great quality turkey. If you want a delicious result, then buying a really good quality, naturally raised, antibiotic and hormone-free turkey. The basic rule of thumb is, if you go with a pound per person, you get a little bit more meat than you need and you'll usually have leftovers. Some coriander seed, kosher salt, fresh thyme, lemons, and fresh bay leaves. Dried bay leaves work perfectly well. If you can't find fresh bay leaves, feel free to substitute them. If you wanna make a perfect turkey, you're gonna need the following tools. We have a roasting pan for our turkey. The most important piece of the puzzle here is that it is large enough to allow us to be able to get our turkey in or out. This one comes with this great rack. I like to elevate the turkey above the pan so that the heat can get around underneath it. They sell turkey roasters in the supermarket. Those are great disposable one-time use items. I happen to have this great big roasting pan, so we're gonna use this. A small bowl, a meat fork, a knife and cutting board, and a little grater for zesting lemons and that we're gonna season our turkey with. Um, any grater will do, or if you don't have a grater, you could even just peel the lemon and chop it up, but most people have a grater.